Uh, so, something that I think we're, uh, we're all kind of wondering is, uh, who really is Impact Coatings? Um, I, obviously, presumably you're doing coatings, but what sort of coatings do you do? Where did you come from? Um, and when did your business first, first be seen on the fuel cell circuit? So, Impact Coating uh, is essentially, well, it goes way back uh, in excess of 20 years with coating. Um, we originally started with doing coating in what we call the DMR segment, which is uh, decorative and metallization and reflectors. Uh, and for the past 10 years, we've been spending our effort or more effort into the fuel cell plate coating. So we have a, uh, a very extensive background in fuel cell. I would guess to say, or I would, I would say we are probably the oldest fuel cell coating company that's around on the market at the moment. Okay, fantastic. And I have to say that I'm extremely pleased to see you guys uh, here with us this year. I understand that you guys had a little bit of a turbulent year uh, with respect to your management system. Can you comment a little bit about that and where you are now? Of course. Um, I mean, this is all public information, of course, and we are a listed company, so, so it's, uh, no, no secrets with it. But we've had a, um, an extensive management uh, refit. We have uh, new owners that have come in and new CEO, uh, new sales organization. Pretty much the whole, or most of the, the management team has been replaced or reorganized. Okay, and, and how has that affected you guys? Well, I think we are better shaped now than we've ever been to, to meet the future needs and to meet the demands of the automotive industry. Um, obviously, with our background, we've, we've been very diversified. So we work with, um, you know, all the way from decorative glasses, um, watches, all the way through to automotive industry. Uh, the strength has never been automotive industry, but obviously now with the fuel cell uh, taking off the way it is, uh, we need to be able to meet the automotive standards and the automotive industry standards. Okay, I see. So uh, when we talk about coatings, could you give just a really quick overview on how this is how this is sort of done. Uh, I understand that there's lots of details you can't go into or a little bit too technical for us over on the public forum, but generally, like, how does this, how do you put your coatings onto whatever it is that you're trying to do, be it decorative or metallic or any of the examples you gave? So the technology we have, we, I mean, we are, <clears throat> we are a coating technology solutions company. So we are not just doing coatings. We are doing a, we are developing coatings that can be used for specific applications, and the coating is done or applied with a machine, a PVD machine, that we also have developed. So it, it's a case of, of combining the technology of the coating and the, the, uh, the actual machine to apply the coating. Okay, I see. So it's not that you guys are actually a company that just does coatings. You come up with unique solutions for unique problems, both with respect to the machine that's going to be putting the coating on and also the material that's being used for the coating. Is that right? That's correct. So essentially, we have four verticals that we work with, uh, decorative metallization and reflectors, which I mentioned before. And then the fourth vertical is the fuel cell. And of course, with the fuel cell demands, or the fuel cell plates at the moment, the demands for plates and, and, and the applications and the, uh, the performance of the plates, it's vital that we understand what our customers need and, and where they're going in the next year, in the next five years, and in the next 15 years. Right. Uh, your title is achieving the 20,000 hours. So in order to get the 20,000 hours out of a fuel cell, presumably you need to uh, make sure that the coding that you're doing can actually can actually go the distance, so to, so to speak. Um, could you tell us a little bit about why you might need to use a coating on a fuel cell? Um, like what sort of advantages do you get? And particularly from your coating, what do you think is, what makes you guys better or different? So, I mean, there, there are two uh, schools of thoughts on, on, um, on fuel cell plates. You have pre-coated and post-coated. Um, and I don't particularly want to go in and say one is better than the other. You have different applications for, 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 uh, for the plates. Um, the post-coated solution tend to have a, uh, a better performance and a better durability than, than pre-coated. Uh, Both the durability and efficiency, or? Um, yes, but, but predominantly it's the durability that, that's, the, uh, that's the issue, or that's the, the, what, what people are looking at when it comes to the, um, the lifetime of the stack. So, so we are seeing with, with uh, some of the, the big tier ones that we're working with now that we're doing analysis and, and tests and, and so forth, uh, it, it more and more the pendulum swings towards metal plates that are um, po um, post-coated. 
as opposed to pre-coated. But again, it depends a little bit on the application and if it's a stationary fuel cell or if it's a, a mobile fuel cell, so to speak, that goes into the, to, to a vehicle. Okay, um, and so then you mentioned a little bit that you were checking, you needed to make sure that there was durability. Have you done any, or have your, the people that use your coated fuel cells, have they done any tests, or do you have any, any applications that you can speak to with respect to whether or not you can actually achieve this 20,000 hour goal? Yes, we do. Uh, we, I mean, the industry as a whole is extremely secretive, uh, and you know, that's, that's, you just have to live with it. We speak to clients and they all say, well, we, we kind of like the, the post-coated setup, but have you got any data on it? And of course we do have data. We, we've tested it together with, with OEMs and we've tested it with, with clients that we, that we are working with. Uh, more often than not, we cannot share that. That's, uh, you know, it's under the NDA and it, it's very secretive. But what we can say that the demands of the industry, it's going towards the 20,000 hours and more. And if we are going to be able to succeed and stay on this or stay in this race and, and, and be on the forefront as we are today, there is only one way to, to, to stay there, and that's to make sure that we can actually meet those demands. And the best way to do that is to make sure that you work with the best people. So we are constantly on the lookout for the best people around the world that are material experts or that are in, in one shape or form um, that can provide us with, with a strong knowledge on, on, on where we're going and how to achieve what we, just, we want to achieve. Okay, so it's, it's not just that you really stand by your technology, it's also that you feel like you work with the best people in order to give the best product possible to the people that actually uh, are trying to get these coding solutions going. That's correct. I mean, the, you sit back in your track and you will get run over. So the only way we can, we can move ahead is to be at the, at the forefront and make sure that we work with the best people. Okay, fantastic. Um, so you'd mentioned uh, in a pre-interview a little bit that you actually have some of the coded stacks on the road. Um, it's in a, is that in a car? Or a we have uh, stacks on the road since a number of years back, uh, both for evaluation purposes, but also for for more uh, durability test. Um, and we are in, in talks with several uh, tier ones and OEMs. Uh, and of course, in, in, in many of these cases, the, the stacks are on the road being tested as, as we speak. So it is, um, our, our technology is, is proven. Uh, we know it works. Uh, we are very secretive in uh, what it is we do. You know, it's not uh, a general public knowledge that we want to have. This is our competitive edge and, and we maintain to make sure that we, we carry on developing our competitive edge and we make sure that we are working with the right clients and the right OEMs to, to bring the company forward. Okay, so with, without giving too many details then, uh, can you speak at all, uh, how long have they been on the road and what sort of, I, I know you're talking about durability, but where do you start seeing uh, losses in performance? Is it with respect to efficiency mainly? Yeah, I mean, there are, there are a number of uh, cases where you can see, you see, where you can see loss of, of performance, and it has everything to do with the air quality of where they're being tested. In some, in some uh, cities around the world, you have a very poor air quality, and that directly affects the, the output of, of the stack. Uh, what we can say is that the stacks that, have, that we are testing now, and that have been in test, uh, several of them have been have, are, are way above 5,000 hours. So we have a, uh, a good track record in, in what we're doing, and, and we have um, a very good roadmap ahead on how we're going to achieve the, the 20,000 hours and what we need to do. Okay, so um, you guys come up with these unique solutions. Is it at all possible to, I don't know, develop a coating for places with poor air quality, have different things for like Sweden versus Beijing, for example? Is that a possibility, or do you just try to design something that's going to be top-notch regardless of where you run it? Yeah, I mean, you, 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 of course you can do that, but it wouldn't really make sense to make different coatings for, for different cities, and you would have a, a million different uh, versions of, of the coating. So you try to make one fits all, uh, one size fits all, uh, at least to a certain extent when it comes to the, the performance of the stack and, and what the output of the stack is going to be. So, of course, yeah, um, ideally speaking, you guys would continue to be doing lots of coating of, uh, of the, the fuel cell stacks, uh, which is great. And in many other areas in the fuel cell industry, scalability is a real problem. Uh, we have lots of concepts coming out, but uh, it's really difficult to actually implement them all on a larger scale. Do you expect that scalability is going to be an issue uh, for you guys as well, or do you have a plan in place? Of course. I mean, the uh, scalability is an issue in any industry that's growing rapidly. 
and the fuel cell industry will take off. It's not a question of when. I mean, we can just look at the, the show here today. There's a lot of positive energy, uh, pun intended. Um, and it is a, 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 you know, it's a good industry to be in. We are in, um, a, at the early stage. Um, the governments around the world are now waking up. Uh, we are seeing in, in Asia that's definitely driving the, the, um, the locomotive, so to speak. Uh, there, there's certainly scalability problems for us and for our competitors. We need to find ways where we can be cost efficient and where we can still maintain our high uh, quality of, of the coating. And, and um, we have several ideas of, of how we're going to move forward and, and what we need to do. And it's all in the pipeline. But of course, it is a roadmap that stretches over you know, 10, 15 years. And, and it needs to be uh, it needs to be stretched in the same, in parallel with the industry is developing. Right, it can be quite difficult for uh, the industry to gain momentum and actually get it moving and start seeing those different solutions. That's the hen and the egg, right? So we, we are, uh, if we develop something um, and we are ahead of the game, then we may have to sit back and wait for the industry to, to, to turn up. And if we are not developing, well, then we will be passed by our competitors. So it's a case of, of having a, a, good, uh, a good leadership in the company that, that can uh, work and be dedicated to, to the, the market and our customers and, and, and be very, uh, to listen to what the clients and, and the customers want, because that's essentially what drives us forward. Okay, and, and you feel like today you do have that leadership, you do have a, a path forward. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, we have um, very exciting opportunities in, in Asia. We've uh, got some very exciting opportunities here in, 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 uh, in Europe. Um, North America, we've not really explored yet. Um, it is something that we have in the pipeline, but uh, there's certainly the same opportunities in, in the States as soon as we, we get around to, to actually materializing and, and setting the, uh, the, um, the strategy on how we're going to deal with, with North America. Right, thank you. Um, and in your previous answer, you'd mentioned that, of, of course, decreasing cost is always an important factor with respect to scalability and in a larger sense, just with respect to the fuel cell technology. At the moment, we're relying, most sectors of the fuel cell industry are relying quite heavily on government subsidies. Um, is this as well, are you guys currently making any sorts of money with your fuel cell stuff? Or are you pulling in money from other places? Uh, how are you continuing your fuel cell um, research and, and expertise. I, I, I'm going to stick my neck out now and I'm going to say there are very few companies that are making uh, any kind of money in the fuel cell industry without government subsidies, right? Yeah, it's tough right now. The, the technology is sound, but the implementation just isn't quite there yet. Uh, so, but obviously, we're, we're running businesses. Uh, yeah. So at the well, end of I the mean, day... The big giants, they obviously have diversified all of their interests, so they have many different business legs and business units that they stand on and that often funds the, um, the fuel cell development. We are no different because we have the decorative uh, metallization and the reflector business, which is our bread and butter. And that is essentially making sure that we are still here in a year's time and in five years' time. We have a, a very, very good uh, roadmap forward where the, the DMR... Uh, segments are in many ways uh, part, well, partially funding our fuel cell development. Yeah, that's actually that's fantastic in terms of your comp company's durability. Uh, if you can have a revenue source from something outside of this particular sector and then feed it back in, sure. uh, I think that speaks a lot to the longevity of your company. I think that's really, really quite positive. Um, so at this point, I was just kind of curious. We've talked a little bit about your technology, about your applications. Is there anything that you're super excited about? What sort of message do we want to really drive home today? Well, I mean, I think the, you, you start off by, by asking you know, how, man, how, how a company is doing. Uh, and I think I've joined uh, the company nine months ago. Um, and the transition we have done from May of last year to where we are today, it's remarkable, absolutely remarkable. And I think the, one of the most exciting opportunities we have uh, with some of the OEMs and on some of the tier ones we are, we are working with now, will um, in the next, well, next period of time, should I say, um, prove that we are on the right track. And, and I'm, uh, I'm absolutely delighted to be part of this team. And, and, and it's nice to see that it's, the company is going from a, a small prototype workshop into becoming an industrialized partner that can deal with you know, big OEMs and big tier ones. And this has been a impact coatings challenge in the past. It's been a prototype 
uh, startup that's not really got off the ground. And, and now with the, the changes we've made, it's very evident that we are, we are on the right track and, and the technology and the people we have within the company are the absolute best you, you, can, on the, you, you can find on the market. Wonderful, so you're here, you're confident, and you're, you're ready for your next steps, basically. Absolutely, bring right. it on. Wonderful, that's really fantastic to hear. Um, at this point, we do have a little bit of time. If any of the audience have any questions, just put up your hand and I can bring the microphone down to you. Uh, this is a great opportunity to get any extra information or uh, any, answer any of those coding-related questions that you might have. Um, if there's nothing at this particular moment, though, I'm sure Will would be more than happy to speak with you. He's at booth E61-1, is that right? Correct, right. yeah. We have our senior technology experts on hand, so if if you want technical discussions, you're more than, uh, more than welcome to join us in our booth. All right, so head on over to booth E61-1 uh, to check out Impact Codings and to find out a little bit more information. Thank uh, Will, thank you so much for being here today. This was quite informative for us, both respect to, you, to your company structure and as well what you guys do over at Impact Codings. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.